Hey everybody, hope everyone's doing well. It's golden week here in Japan, so we have five days off, which is great. So today, my wife has taken the kids to the cinema, so I'm all home alone. So I want to make a video that I've been planning for a while. And basically, I want to talk about how it's been using this combination for the last three months. Now, anyone who follows my channel knows that most of the videos I post about, I take pictures using this combo. Basically, I got this lens in January. I've had the OM1 for a year now, and I did use this lens for two and a half weeks last September, but due to really bad weather and just sort of lack of opportunity, I didn't really get the pictures I wanted to get. That video, a lot of people watched that video, and the, just the three weeks I had with it, I was really, really impressed, but I didn't feel I'd really seen the true potential of the lens so in January I picked up my own copy and it's now the beginning of May so I've been using it for about four months and I feel I've really put it through its paces what I did do is I used it for three months without the teleconverter I just wanted to really test the lens on its own and then I added the teleconverter about two weeks ago and I've been taking a few shots with that what I want to do is I want to go through about 10 shots that I like that I've taken with this combination in that last video I put up a lot of the pictures that I'd taken in that three week period. I won't include any of those in this video. These will all be pictures that I have taken since January with this lens. As you know, people who watched my videos from especially last year, I was using the Panasonic 100 to 400. And while I really liked that lens, I haven't taken it out of the bag since I got this lens. This lens is definitely sharper and it's really noticeable when doing birds in flight specifically. That's when there's a clear difference between the two lenses. If you've just got a tame bird close by, you're probably not going to notice much difference. But the fact that this shoots at f4 and that's at f6.3, that's double the light. So you can get higher shutter speeds with less ISO. So I've been really, really impressed with this. I do feel, I don't know about copy variation or whatever, I do feel that this lens, and especially the, the teleconverter, is giving me better shots than I was getting when I used it for three weeks last year. I don't know why that is, whether it was just the weather and the bad conditions, but I just feel nearly all of my shots just seem to be a little bit sharper than they were when I used the other lens sort of seven, eight months ago. So I'm not sure why that is. But since I got this one in January, I've been using it a lot, and I've really, I think, tested it in all kind of conditions with lots of different varied subjects all birds mind you but birds in flight waders songbirds lots of different situations so i feel i'm pretty acclimatized to how the lens works and i feel i've got a pretty good idea of how it performs so i'm really really happy with this setup it's so light and i often don't even take a bag i just take this with me because i just feel it's pretty inconspicuous i just put it on i don't use any special carrying i just use a regular strap with these detachable things here that takes off so if i hold it just above the water which i do a lot if i can't take those off the water the strap's going to be dripping in the water so it's practical for that they just easily come on and then they easily go back on again um so i just use a regular strap but it's so light as i said i often just chuck it in my car without a bag and even walking in the park i just don't feel because it's so small that I stand out. So let's head over to the computer. 10 random pictures that I've taken in the last three months with my OM1 and the Olympus 300 millimeter F4. Now let's get straight into it. So I'm gonna start with this one. Now, this one I've chosen because this was on the first afternoon I went out with the lens and it's very unusual to get a gray heron flying this close to you and everything just came together it was in a park um the same park that i've done the other videos from this isn't a crop this flew flew past me and the autofocus worked really well of the om1 coupled with the olympus 300 millimeter at this point i didn't have the teleconverter um so i just love the detail here i love the way you can see it's head tail whatever that thing's called the head crest just slipping off the back of the neck and it just gave me an idea of what the lens could do and i could have got this with the panasonic 100 400 but i don't think it would have been as sharp so and i like the clear background so that's the first picture second one um was 
the cherry blossom season and i've chosen two from cherry blossom season the first one being was a hummingbird moth which are so fast and they only ever stay on one flat literally for a split second so you've got to be really on it to get a shot and this particular shot i was just really happy with i targeted those particular flowers because i wanted a clear background and i just love the wing pose and the clarity is really good and this was f4 2500th of a second iso 2000 that heron one by the way was 1600th of a second f4 iso 2500 so yeah the hummingbird moth it was just something because usually when you see sakura in japan it's always the japanese white eyes those little green birds that you see they are usually always the shots so it was nice to get something else another species and i just really like it and i actually thought the square crop suited this now the next image i'm going to choose um obviously as i just said i did take a lot of pictures of japanese white eyes and there are a couple i like um the first one this one here um has got a load of attention on my social media i think on facebook it was chosen on one group and it's got over thirteen thousand likes or something so it's people seem to like it it is very these birds also like the hummingbird moth don't sit still they're all over the place and so to get it sort of flanked by the flowers nice and still nice and crisp crisp was really pleasing but in actual fact i preferred this shot um i don't particularly like the background there's some sort of reeds or something in the distance but i just love the framing here the fact that it sticks its eye out sticks its head out it's pretty sharp and i just love the fact that it's surrounded by the pink sakura so that was my favorite shot of the white eyes this year the next shot is of a northern plover now some of these shots you have seen in prior videos i apologize for that but yeah um i took a number of shots of male um, northern plovers and they're much more colorful than the females here's one of them in flight here's a close-up of a male northern plover they've got beautiful colors and then here's another one of a male northern plover but my favorite plover shot i took with the 300 millimeter was this female plover i just love the synchronicity of the background and the bird i just think they match really really well and these birds are not as colorful as the males but i just think this is a beautiful sort of yeah i just really really like this shot and again 300 millimeter did so well here and this was all before i'd got the teleconverter so this is all the bare lens it's probably quite a heavy crop but still very happy with that next shot Right, so I took a number of kingfisher shots, including several in flight. Um, this one and this one were in flight, and there's a one on a perch. But actually, the one I liked best was just a lucky shot. I was walking along, and I just noticed this kingfisher literally below me at the location I usually shoot kingfishers, and he didn't move. And while he was there, I tried a number of things. I tried the high handheld high res, which went pretty well, and this one was a single shot, a regular shot, and. Um, I did a sort of played around with the edit and I just loved how the edit finished because the background matches the green on the uh, kingfisher's cheek and I just really like how this looks. He's looking up at me, I'm looking, usually this would, wouldn't be, it'd almost be a throwaway shot because the background, he was so close to the water, there's no perch, there's not a lot happening but I just love the, con you know, the matching colours there. So yeah, next we'll go to the duck shot. Yeah, so I covered this in a video before. Again, it's just happened so, so fast. And I just love the, the wing pose here. This was 2,500 the second F4 ISO 1000. I just love the water coming off the beak. The fact that the duck, the last minute, so literally at the bottom of the frame are the reeds. So you've, I've just cropped it, you can't see it. He's literally... Um, I would say 50 centimeters above being out of sight. He would be in the reeds then. And he just banked just before he landed and changed direction completely. And <clears throat> I was in 50 frames per second, high speed burst mode. And I managed to catch a number of shots as he changed direction. And I just like this one and the clear background as well. Right, next. As always, I took a number of um blue rock thrush shots 
Here's one in a field um, with a blurred out background that was ISO 200, 640 per second wide open. And here's the female with um, nice lines in the background. But I like this one of the male because he's got three different insects in his beak. There's an ant, there's a spider, and I think there's a larger spider. So they are, they are amazing hunters, Blue Rock Thrashers, but the fact that he managed to get three in his beak at one time was pretty impressive. So it's not it's an amazing shot. Um, it's not incredibly sharp. I quite like the background, but just the fact that it's unusual to get three insects in your mouth at one time. So next where we're going to go, I, I did actually make a vlog about Oriental Pratt and Coles and I haven't put it out yet and I feel I kind of missed the opportunity, but I might still do. But yeah, I took a couple of shots of Oriental Pratt and Coles and I was down on the ground and the background was nice and blurred out and here are a couple. This one, I edited it small to upload it as a thumbnail and I now can't find the original size. <laughs> That's typical me, very disorganized. So I'm probably gonna have to re-edit again because, so I'll actually choose the other one for the main shot because even though I don't like the, the color of the background as much, I prefer the, the, the former color. Um, this is nice and sharp. And this was at F4, 500 of a second, ISO 200. Next um, was the Osprey, which was, I think my last video. And again, I detailed the story of the shot in that last but this was the first time I'd ever used, well, first time I'd ever used my um, teleconverter. And uh, literally after 20 minutes after putting it on the camera. And this is a pretty good shot. Not nice detail. Um, I say pretty good shot, sorry. Pretty nice looking shot. Not pretty good shot. Sounds arrogant. Pretty nice looking shot. Um, but yeah, I just like it. The background's quite nice. Um, usually you see these in the sea, of course. This is in a lake in a park. But I was just lucky to be there and... I just like that shot. So next what we've got. A couple more I think. Um, this is. I went down to the coast to do some shorebirds. And I got lucky. This great knot with starting to get into summer plumage. Breeding plumage. Came close by. I was almost in the water. Holding the camera just above the water. And he came. I was out on a jetty. He came round with some grass in front. And I managed to get these shots. And I love this. Lots of nice detail, beautiful angle. Um, this was 1,600 a second, exposure compensation plus three, ISO 500, F6.3. So I, at this point, had had my teleconverter. So this is with the teleconverter. I stopped it down just a third of a stop. Um, you can see water drop on the beak there. I just really like this shot. Stunning bird. And then the last one was also with the teleconverter, and this is of a snowy plover in flight. Um, I used the teleconverter, this was F6.3, 4,000th of a second, ISO 800. Um, these things are super fast. Uh, I didn't use a dot sight, I think I want to go back and try it with the dot sight, but this was um, just through the camera lens. But again, pretty good detail, and this is, I think, where you'd probably notice the difference between the 300 millimeter and the Panasonic 100 to 400. When it's just a static bird close by, staying still, you're not gonna notice a huge difference between the lenses. But when it's in flight like this, you are gonna notice more detail on the 300, more detail on the 300 millimeter F4. So yeah, those are the shots. Thanks so much for watching. Hope by looking at these photos, it gives you an idea of what the lens can do. Um, I'm very happy with it. And uh, I really want to use it for butterflies and dragonflies and things like that. And the season is just starting now. So I'll put that through as paces over the next few months and probably share the pictures I get of those animals. I'll share in a later video. So I hope you enjoyed the photos. Thanks so much for sticking to right through to the end. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. I make a lot of videos, most of which are using this setup. So you can see how it goes and how my progress with this lens and setup goes. So thanks so much. Give us a like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.